Hello everyone, my name is Nikki and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my August bullet journal spread and this is inspired by Hokusai's The Great Wave. I am heavily inspired by this piece of artwork, Japanese Impressionism and the artist themselves. So I felt that it would be a great idea to produce this and make it into my own bullet journal spread, inspired by the journey and the story that the piece tells. So I'm going to be using and drawing a lot of elements inspired by pieces of the artwork and I'll be explaining that and talking about the artwork itself. To begin I'm drawing my entry page which is a decorative little way to say hello and welcome in the new month. I'm starting off by drawing the mountain which is Mount Fuji in the back and some very calm waves at the bottom of the circle there. Then I colored in the sun in this bright yellow. I'm using this light grey Unipin fineliner to do the shading and the idea here is Mount Fuji is so tall, so big and grand that it takes up the majority the page and that is the main focal point. It looks so big and towers over the waves as the waves are calm, they have less authority on the page itself. However, we will be seeing the waves eventually grow taller, grow more violent and more vibrant. Then to finish off, I just stamped the word August at the top of the circle there. Moving on to the first proper double page spread, it is the section for my goals, reminders and my Instagram and YouTube planning. I begin by drawing the full boxes on the two pages, two on each page, and I like to leave a gap at the bottom so I have more space to draw the waves that I'll be doing in a little bit. But anyway, at the top, I added a little bar so it looks like these boxes are hanging tapestries or hanging pieces of art. And then at the bottom, I began to draw the outlines of the waves. Basically, I had one sort of form and a repetitive pattern where I would have more of a circle shaped wave with a spiral in it. And then the other wave would have these wavy lines going into them with DC spray as well. I quite like the design of this because it shows a lot of emotion in the wave and even though it's very very simplistic it was easy to do and also I felt inspired by certain pieces of Japanese artwork as well. I quite like the idea of trying to express that the waves are increasingly growing, they're becoming a bit more violent and vibrant and there's a lot more movement and motion in comparison to the first page where the waves were calm. Then you'll eventually see the progression leading up into the climax that is the great wave itself. To add the finishing touches to this page, I stamped the title of each of the sections, goals, reminders, Instagram and YouTube at the top of each of these boxes. Then for Instagram and YouTube, I wrote down a mini calendar from Monday through to Sunday with every single day of the month. Then underneath, I can write down my plans and have that calendar to refer to or mark. Then I decided to add some drop shadows with my Tombow brush pen in this light gray and that just helps the boxes stand out on the page, brings them forward a bit more, and I feel that it adds to the design as well. Moving on, we have two more trackers, and these are my mood tracker and my water tracker. I like to keep a tab on how much water I'm drinking and to try and stay hydrated is my new year's resolution and it's very important to make sure you drink lots of water especially in the hot summer months. Then also it's very important for me personally to be able to keep an eye on how I'm feeling and to also make sure that I am trying my best to remain happy and positive but also reflect on my mood and how I'm truly feeling. I also like to make sure that my mood trackers are quite artistic. So I decided to draw a koi fish on the left page and you might be thinking why a koi fish in particular? Well in the great wave there are three fishing boats in the piece of art and these boats are used to transport live fish and it is said that these boats are supposed to be heading back to the capital in the great wave. So basically I drew some koi fish in this bullet journal. I really love how they look. I think they're very cute. Also it's important to mention that the koi fish has a part in Japanese culture and it's supposed to have a strong link to Japanese national identity but also it's said that they are supposed to represent good fortune, luck and prosperity so I thought that it would be a good idea to include them in my bullet journal spread. The idea is that for each of the scales I can color them in in a different shade of grey depending on my mood. Usually the darker the lower my mood and the lighter the more happy I'm feeling and again I went with the same theme adding that bar at the top so it looks like a hanging piece of art and then at the side I stamped mood 
and I also added a few waves at the bottom just so it gave the fish some motion. Moving on to the next page, I did the same box, however slightly thinner, and I drew some waves, as you can see here, using that same technique where I just draw the wavy lines and the spirals. And I just did that at the bottom of the page to add that cohesive theme of water, and then using the lighter grey, I added some shading. Then I drew the days one all the way through to the 31st, and as you can see here, I am drawing eight water droplets. And basically here, I'm going to be keeping a log of how much water I'm drinking. Then I added the drop shadow to help these pieces stand out more on the page. The next double page spread has some new features I have just added to my bullet journal spread. And this is the health and well-being section. Linking to the water drinking and the mood tracker, I decided to do a health tracker and also a tracker for plans so I can make sure that I'm keeping happy and also keeping healthy. In this exercise and health tracker, I have a section for no soda, no chocolate, 10,000 steps, stretch and exercise so I can keep a track of when I'm doing that and how often. Then I added every single day of the month down the side there so basically if I do do that I will colour in the block and if I don't do it I will leave the block blank. Then I can see at the end of the month how productive I've been and what my progress is. Then for the other section it's just going to be basically a space where I can track when I've got events coming up, when I have plans and I can keep tabs on that and also try to make sure that I'm staying active, I'm still doing things and I won't be sat at home doing nothing all summer. So for the decoration of this page I decided to draw the mountains in the background as you can see and then the waves crashing at the bottom. I feel at this point this is the 50-50 point where the mountains do tower over the waves but the waves are just becoming so ferocious and so violent and they're all over the place even coming over the boxes as you can see and I think that this point is one of the cumulative points before we reach the climax of the great wave and it is very important to keep note because in Hokusai's work the great wave the water itself does shrink the mountains in perspective as you will see so at this point when it's at the 50 50 you'll then see the difference now i'm doing that tracker and to keep it cohesive with the introduction page i also drew the sun there as well overlapping the box and now i'm just adding some shading to the mountains because i do like my work to look a lot more 3d i hate it when it's flat and remains flat even though my work does look quite like a sketch all the time that's personally just my style and how i prefer to draw but i still like to make it look 3d and pop out and give it some perspective and depth that's why i decided to shade with the lighter shade of gray and of course now i'm just filling in the box and adding the finishing touches to the page as always <laughs> to finish off this page i also stamped the word plan at the top of the box and then i added drop shadows However, to keep that perspective, I made sure I missed out the part of the sea spray and added some at the front in front of that drop shadow and some behind. So the boxes would stand out with all of the background detail, but also some parts would appear to be in front of them as well. Next we're going to be moving on to my music and books tracker. I used to do this way back when I first started bullet journaling and then I stopped. So I decided since it's a summer and I'm not focusing on homework and revision right now, I replace those with stuff like music and books so I can really get back into what I love the most and really have fun with it and spend that time rekindling my love for reading and music as well. I drew two koi fish here and they sort of form a circle around each other and one of them is slightly larger than the other. I just absolutely adore the way that the koi fish looked and I like to play around with the details on the scales. I think that this is one of my most favourite pages so far in the bullet journal. With the koi fish and what they represent, I think that it's an absolutely beautiful addition and it was very therapeutic to draw as well. It did take a lot of time, however, I just feel that each of the details so carefully put together really make the page stand out as well and having this decoration and this design right in the middle and I can write down all of these things that I love and are getting into all my plans around it for things to listen to, things that I'm enjoying, books that I like to read or mini reviews. 
It would be so wonderful and I really enjoy being able to put time and effort into these designs. So when I'm using my bullet journal, I can see them and it really makes me feel happy. While drawing the koi fish, seeing as I basically used the Unipin fineliner pens in black, all I did was vary the size. So I used the 0.2mm for the majority of it, and then used the 0.4mm for the rest of it to add certain dark areas. I basically focused on the line work a lot and using some shading, also trying to mimic the pattern on the skin as well and try and make it look realistic and really stand out on the page and appear more 3D. Again, since my work tends to look quite like a sketch, I added a lot of those lines to just add extra detail extra depth and perception and I'm quite happy with the way that it turned out. And for the scales on the koi on the left, I basically drew a swell pattern as you can see and went along every single one of the scales to give it that extra detail. Then for the second koi, I went for a little bit more of a simple pattern. And of course this koi is a bit smaller, so I tried to vary it and make it different again. I'm basically doing the same sort of technique for the head, changing it up just slightly. And then also it's really fun to be able to play around with the positioning of the tail and the fins. So it looks like it flows with the water and flows smoothly and seamlessly. Again, I tried to make them look different, so you will see me do a slightly different pattern on, a, on these scales. I basically did almost like some stripes on them, but first, of course, I focus on adding some more darkness and depth, and then focusing along the back of the fish. With these drawings, I found that it was quite a case of being able to layer all of the different elements and eventually just working on certain parts, adding more depth, playing around with the different thicknesses and eventually it does come together and end up looking so so nice and I'm incredibly happy with the way that I was able to draw the koi fish. Another thing is with the scales, once I draw the pattern and the design it still does look rather 2D and quite flat so I was able to use that thicker 0.4mm pen to be able to add some darkness, add some extra shading on some of the scales and really play around with that. Because I wanted to add some more cohesive elements linking to the ocean and the waves, I decided to draw the spiral wave shapes around the fish to sort of keep them together and section them off in the center, but also create the illusion that they are in the water, the water is moving around them. So I added the swells and those wavy lines, tried to vary them a lot. So again, it is cohesive with the rest of the journal, the other themes in there, and you can see how this looks. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out and I think it's a brilliant way to be able to play around with the theme of water and movement in still peace. I also feel that the element of adding in the koi was kind of like a reference to a moment of calm because as you can see the progression of how the waves change and become more and more violent and more and more tough and towering over the mountain. I feel that adding these koi fish is sort of like a break and a pause that little moment of peace and serenity. To finalize, I added some extra stray waves around the edges just to lighten that blend between the blank page and the waves. And then I stamped the word music at the bottom left and books at the top right. Now, as we move on to the climax piece, and that is the great wave itself, we reach the end of the bullet journal as I draw this page before my diary section, which is the final part of the spread for this month. And you can see how the wave started to build up and build up and eventually overpower the mountain. So here I draw Hokusai's the great wave in my own style and put it onto paper. And definitely having researched this art piece, and drawing it myself, I learned a lot about the way he composed it and each of the elements that often do go unnoticed. So I'm going to be talking about all the different pieces and really discussing this piece of work and what I love about it. So even though the most focal point you may think is the wave and that's the most recognizable part. There's so many other pieces that need to be seen. One of the main parts is the mountain and that mountain is Mount Fuji in the background. I haven't drawn it out in pen yet, but it's in pencil and it's on the right hand page. 
Mount Fuji is considered a huge part of Japanese national identity and also it is considered sacred. It is a huge part of Japanese culture and you can see that throughout this whole piece it just seems so small and overpowered by the wave itself. The formation of the wave, even though my composition may not be the best, it's my own attempt and representation of this piece after all. It should form a circle around Mount Fuji and the mountain should appear so shrunk and minuscule in perspective. The top of the wave that's quite fluffy and looks like sea foam and ocean spray should point down an angle towards Mount Fuji as well. That's another part of the composition which I really think is quite interesting because it draws in your focus as it points directly to the mountain itself. Itself. Some people comment that the wave and the formation forms a yin yang with the wave and the negative space, so the sky and the wave itself, almost forming that symbol. And also another key part, the large wave is threatening these three fishing boats that were used to transport the live fish and apparently there should be around 30 people in these boats. They are so afraid and scared of this wave which seems to overpower them and it should be around 10 meters in height. It's that tall and the fact that it overpowers the mountain by so much shows that fear that is instilled in the people. I just think that there are so many pieces within here that I absolutely adore and I think that being able to analyse art, learn more about it, there are so many hidden meanings and things that you can learn and learning is one of the best things that you can do. I appreciate art so much and I think that this opportunity was quite fascinating to be able to research an art piece, find out more about the artists themselves and also with this being in black and white it may also be a reference to Hokusai's earlier work where he focused mainly just in monochromatic colour schemes, just black and white. And finally to finish off this page I'm stamping every day of the week Monday through to Sunday with my ink stamps and drawing out the calendar underneath. And then moving on to the final section of the bullet journal and this is my weekly diary section. Basically I'm following the same layout as the previous month where everything is minimized and shrunk down. So basically I have one long box for every single week of, in the month. So I'm drawing five across this double page. Then at the bottom of each page I have two larger boxes for extra notes. So in the idea is basically if I've got any events, any things coming up or anything that I need to note down then I can write them down in this week seeing as I don't need everything to be that detailed as I am on summer holiday and it's a lot more relaxed. Then at the top left corner I stamped the word August, drew a miniature calendar and then I'm drawing drop shadows on all of the boxes just to bring them forward a little bit and add some extra detail to the page just so it doesn't look as flat and dull. Now to finish off, we have the flip through. So we're beginning by introducing the month of August with the huge mountain and the calm waves. After that, we have my goals and reminders and then my Instagram and YouTube plan and tracker where the waves slowly start to gain traction. After that, we have my tracker section for mood and water with the koi fish on the left and the water tracker where I draw a little water droplet for each glass of water that I have. Following that, we then have my health, happiness and well-being tracker with the mountains and the waves slowly becoming one with each other. And then moving on from that, we have my book and music section where I can write down the things that I've been loving or the things that I plan to read and listen to soon with the two koi fish in the center of the page. Then we have Hokusai's Great Wave itself, which is a climax and the key piece of this bullet journal. Then following that, we have my diary section with a little box for each week of the month and extra notes. And then that's it for my bullet journal spread for August. I'm very happy that you guys watched. I basically used Unipin fine liners, Tombow brush pen, a Crayola super tip, and some ink stamps. All very minimal supplies. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next Saturday. Bye.